Hey everybody, welcome back to Daily Devotions. My name is Danny and we are outside this week, which is way harder than I thought to find a quiet-ish place uh, to meet up outside. Uh, so sorry for any noise that you hear along the way. I did want to say thanks to Buzz for jumping in this week with us and toggling back and forth. This whole series has been based off of his talk on loving one another deeply from First Peter on Sunday. And so uh, today on Thursday, we're continuing with the series, kind of jumping back and forth with him. And so if you have your Bibles, you can open to John 15 verse 13. I'm going to try to get this verse from memory um, because I don't have a Bible because my hand is, uh, I guess I could put it in this hand, but I'm holding my phone and I'm doing everything that I can do all at once. And so John 15, 13. So turn there. While you're turning, if you're on the live platform, feel free to jump in the chat room and say hi to some folks. Or if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. We would love to stay connected with you while we shelter in place. We've been talking about love this week and specifically who Christians are called to love uniquely as compared with the rest of the world. And so on Monday, uh, we kind of gave the overview. Tuesday, we talked about loving the folks in the church. Yesterday, Buzz talked a little bit about loving our enemies. And these are all unique people that Christians are called to love. And so today, John 15, 13, we hit the first one that doesn't feel as unique, talking about love for friends, and yet we'll hit the uh, uniqueness that Christianity has with uh, love for friends today. So John 15, 13, Jesus says this, greater love has no one than this, than he lay his life down for his friends. We see pretty quickly that even though this passage is talking about a group of people that every single human being in the world should have, friends in general, you don't have to be Christian to have friends, uh, we see a Christian uniqueness come out even in this in this chapter. Right? Jesus is talking about his death and laying himself down for his friends. He says right after this verse, something we talked about last week, that we are his friends if we do what he commands. And so even as Jesus is talking about friendship here, he's talking about something unique to Christians. And so the unique thing that he says about us as Christians, as we we consider our group of friends is that our love should be marked by self-sacrifice for our friends. You know, in a sense, everyone in the world should sacrifice themselves for others. Everyone in the world should be someone who cares not about themselves, but cares about others. When it comes to our friends in this world, they are the easiest people to love sacrificially, to, to give up our time for, our resources for, to loan our stuff to, all of that. But Jesus reminds us that the pinnacle of love is that we would sacrifice ourselves for those who are closest to us. I think a lot of times when it comes to our friends, uh, even though these folks are people that we're entrusting relationship with as Christians, it's hard to sacrifice our own time for them. Some of us are, have a hard time making time for our friends because we have so much stuff that we feel like we need to do with our own time. We've got our own priorities. We've got work. We've got, we want to keep our house clean. We have all these things that we want to do. And it, when it comes to hanging out with our friends, it takes sacrifice. Sometimes just having friends take sacrifice in general. It costs money to have friends. Sometimes you gotta spend time helping your friends move. Other times you need to take your time to help your friends counsel through an issue. If you've got a friend who's going through something hard like a divorce or a separation or a financial struggle or a job loss or grief, uh, you know that it takes a lot of sacrifice to give up a lot of your own time and energy and emotional energy to help bear the burdens of your friends. And yet Jesus says, the greatest pinnacle of love is that someone would lay down their own life for the life of their friends. And so my question for us today as we think about this topic is, who are the people in your life that are closest to you and the easiest to love? Now, who is your circle of friends? Uh, I've noticed in shelter in place, it's been kind of interesting. Uh, our friends, my, my wife and I, we've had uh, a lot of friends that's really hard to connect with because we've got a lot of kids, we've got a lot of responsibilities, and yet shelter in place uh, with all of the responsibilities kind of disappearing and less of our weekly meetings happening, we've actually had more space to spend some time uh, on the phone or in Zoom or finding ways to connect uh, with friends of ours that that we consider our closest friends. Uh, we're realizing that there's this inner circle we have in our life of people that we trust the most, that we'd want to go on vacation with the most, that we want to dream about what's on the other side of COVID-19 with the most. And these are the people that I'm talking about. Who is your circle of friends? I mean, maybe they're Christian people, maybe they're work people, maybe they're non-Christian folks. Who are the people that you long to see, that you love to be with, who normally give life to you when you hang out with? Who are those folks? Write those names down. Maybe today a good exercise would be to thank God for those folks, that even in a season like this that's isolating and lonely, God has given you some friends in your life uh, that, that you can love and, and devote yourself to. Now, this passage is not just talking about having friends, though. This passage is talking about laying down your life for them. And so the question is, as you look at this list, what would it look like to look at these lists as the names of people 
that God has called you uniquely to sacrifice yourself for? And what would it mean uh, for you to devote uh, more energy towards giving to these specific people? And maybe as you read through this list that you're writing down, maybe you'll, you'll notice that some of these people are, are going through a hard season right now. How can you sacrifice your own time to serve them in this season? Some of them need some financial resources. How can you come alongside them and help them with financial resources in this season? Some of them have emotional issues. How can you devote some time to helping them process through some emotional things in this season? Because if you are truly to be a friend as Jesus describes to these close people, the pinnacle of that friendship is laying down your life for these people. Well, chances are you will never have to literally lay down your life for the people on this list. And yet Jesus did. And Jesus gives us the beautiful pinnacle example of calling us his friends and laying down his literal life so that we might have life and forgiveness of sins. Or these are the people on this sheet that maybe you need to commit to saying, you know what, I will do anything for these people. I will sacrifice my time for these people. If they call, I'm going to pick up the phone. If they need something, I'm going to go right over there. If they experience hardship, I'm going to drop everything and jump on an airplane when we can get on airplanes, right? I am going to devote myself to these people. These are the ones that I'm going to commit to sacrifice myself for. Now, we know as Christians that God has called us to, to lay down our lives and sacrifice ourselves for, for anybody, for, for a stranger, for an enemy, for all these things that we've talked about. And yet, even as we start thinking about this in the context of our own friendship group, we start to realize that this is actually a pretty hard thing to do. So maybe what you need to do today is to take some time to say, God, how can I be someone who is more self-sacrificial in my love for these people? What do they need? How can I help them? How can I serve them? How can I devote myself to these folks? And the beautiful thing about friendship is what makes friends different than enemies and friends different than acquaintances is that these are the people that probably have your name on their list too. And these are the people that if you're listening today, they're probably thinking about ways they can serve you. And the beautiful thing about friendship, it's kind of like marriage, right? Is that when it works well, you are saying, no, it's about you. It's about you. I want to serve you. And they're saying, no, it's about you. It's about you. I want to serve you. And you enter into a relationship where not only do you have people that you have the joy of giving towards, but you've got a group of people in your life that you know have devoted themselves to your welfare at all costs, even great cost to themselves. It's beautiful to have friends. If you're in a season where you're writing down that list and you're realizing, man, I don't have any close people in my life, let me encourage you to start praying that God would bring some people like that into your life. You know, at the church, that's one of the things that we do is we connect people together. We look for things like small groups and after parties and ways to hang out and connect in men's ministry, women's ministry, kids' ministry, student ministries, just to create these contexts where friendship can be born. And maybe it's going to take you reaching out to build some time and some trust and making some phone calls with some folks, but utilize the resources at our church to start finding some friends, building some acquaintances, devoting yourself to people, and seeing what God does as you devote yourself to the process of growing people into your life. I want to pray for us uh, today as we continue in this study. Tomorrow, Buzz is back to give us our closing word and we'll launch into a new study next week. But let me pray for us as we jump into our day. Let's pray. Father, I pray for anyone uh, who's listening today who has a group of friends in their lives that they love dearly. We, we thank you for that gift of friendship. We think of the examples in the scriptures of people who had amazing friends like David and Jonathan and uh, even here, Jesus calling us his friends and just a picture of what it would be like to have someone in our lives that will lay down everything for us. We pray even more that we would have that for us, that you would allow us to be that person for someone else, that even the people on our list today, that you would give us the ability to uh, serve them, love them, connect with them, uh, honor them in some way, sacrifice ourselves for their good, we pray that you would use us to love people well, whether it's our enemies or our church family or even those who are closest to us. Uh, we know that you, uh, as you walk this earth, you had friends, you had betrayal from their closest friends. We know friendship is not always easy and yet it's a beautiful gift from you. And so we thank you for it. We pray that you would grow us in this aspect of love today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us.